morning. Um, I'm Jessica from Grameen Foundation, and I'd like to present to you about uh, MoTeC, which is Mobile Technology for Community Health. Um, so Grameen Foundation is working very closely with the Ghana Health Service to implement this project, which is aiming to use mobile phones to increase the qual quality and quantity of antenatal and postnatal and also child health care in rural areas of Ghana. So we started off looking at uh, challenges in two, amongst two different groups within maternal health. So the first set of challenges we, talk, we looked at were uh, the challenges that exist in communities. And we found here that there's no, no surprise that there's a real lack of uh, maternal and child health information in these communities. Um, information is typically passed down through generations and elders in the households are the founts of knowledge for maternal and child health usually. Um, that introduces some problems when you look at the levels of myths and traditional practices that exist in these communities, many of which are actually damaging to maternal and child health. So they're not only knowledge gaps, but there are also some aspects of damaging knowledge that are existing in the communities. Um, the other group that we looked at were for nurses, community health workers, trying to deliver healthcare services in these rural areas. So we found that some of the challenges they're dealing with is this a widespread issue of paper-based data collection. And you can see on this picture here the number of registers that nurses were typically using to gather their various bits of um, data. So this was a real headache for them when it came to monthly reporting. We found that nurses were typically spending four to six working days per month simply aggregating data manually, resulting in often quite inaccurate data, but also removing them from service delivery during that time. We also found that the, the vast volumes of paper meant that it's very difficult for nurses to actually gain information back that would be helpful to them in delivering care. So for example, it's very difficult for them to identify patients who had actually defaulted for healthcare. So looking at these, the problems between these groups, then we developed two applications which intersect in order to try and address the challenges amongst the two groups. So the first is with the theme of um, health education through mobile, now looking at the, the end user, so the patient as the client and recipient for that information. So the service is called Mobile Midwife, and it provides weekly information to pregnant women and their family members throughout pregnancy and also in the first year of the child's life. And the information that is delivered weekly is relevant to that woman's stage in pregnancy. So if she's 26 weeks pregnant, she'll get a message about that stage in her pregnancy. And um, the information is highly tailored to the different areas of the countries that we, these women are in. So we ask them where they live, um, we ask them the local language that they would like to receive the information in, and that information is delivered to them which is specific to their area of the country. So, for example, we are implementing currently in the Upper East region of Ghana. So any dietary tips that we might provide through the messages are using um, sources of food that are available to people in that particular region. Um, we try to engage both parents through the messages. And in fact, we've realized that we need to even go beyond that and, and also um, tailor our messages for other members of the household who have an influence on a pregnancy. So for example, mothers-in-law are very important in Ghana in particular. So um, the system also sends messages to clients when they're due or overdue for healthcare. And we'll see in a minute when I describe the um, nurse's application that the system knows when someone is due for an appointment or has even missed an appointment. And at that time sends a message to the client in their local language telling them to go to the appointment. So this information is, de is delivered through SMS or through voice depending on the, the, criti the choice of the client. We've also designed the system to be able to be accessed by those without mobile phones of their own. So um, we see that ha households typically have access to a phone, but the woman might not be at the phone when, when the message is pushed to her. So we've actually designed the system that, so that people can access the system at their own, in their, at their own the time of their choosing as well. So what they do is they, they flash, which is giving a missed call to a sh toll free short code, which then triggers the system to call them back and at that point, the user enters their ID number, which identifies that, that user to the system. So we know how pregnant they are, we know which appointments they've missed, or their G4, and we also know which lo local language they've selected to receive the information in. For those who do own a mobile phone, we ask users when they want to get the message, what time of day, and we send those messages at that time. So in terms of the content that we're delivering, 
through these messages. Um, we arrived at that content through a long process of consultation with Ghana Health Service, our main partner, um, and also with other Ghana Health Service stakeholders at the national, regional, district, and even facility levels in the regions that we're implementing in. We also worked with international and local development partners, and we also had long cons consultations with p potential users. Um, and the, once we arrived at that content, we've gone through a process of, of approval by Ghana Health Service. So now we have a sort of national curriculum of content that we can then localize for each region of, the, of, of Ghana as we progress. So the second application uh, involves providing each health facility with um, a low-end Java-enabled mobile phone. These are $40 Nokia phones. So we're really aiming at a, very, a system that can potentially scale because of its low cost. So on this, on this phone, we load a Mo the MoTeC application, which enables nurses to enter um, information about the patients that they've seen and the, the care they've provided to each patient. So we've tried to build in here various aspects of data validation to enable, to try to reduce the number of errors appearing in the data, increasing its accuracy for decision makers, but also for the nurses as well who will be using that data. <coughs> Um, so the, the nurses enter this information into the phone and uplay, upload the data through GPRS to our central server. And the approximate um, cost is about $3 for uploading that information per facility per month. Um, so this is enabling um, sort of cleaner um, records, really, so better data and more transaction-level data for each particular client. So you, you have actually a a record of the patient's care history. We can also therefore automatically generate those reports that nurses were spending four to six days generating previously by hand. So now we're, autom we're automatically generating those reports. And we also send reminders to nurses. So every Monday morning, nurses receive a message telling them which patients in their communities are due or overdue for particular part, part uh, pieces of, um, of health care. So not only is the client reminded to go to the facility of the health care, but the nurse is also reminded. So that in the case that that client defaults, the nurses can go and follow up with those clients in the communities and deliver the care that they are due for. So how are we doing? We've implemented uh, MOTIC in one district in the Upper East region of Ghana, and that has been active for one year now. Um, and we're now just about to replicate the project in a second district in the central region of Ghana. And the purpose of that is to enable us to practice replicating the project and seeing exactly what level of effort and cost is involved in taking this to a larger scale. Um, meanwhile, Columbia University is conducting a social impact assessment on the existing implementation in the Upper East region. And we hope to have the results of that early next year. Um, and just as an indication of how we're progressing, nine of the 11 uh, facilities that we're dealing with are ready to switch to MOTEC-only generated reports. So in the initial stages, some manual data verification is continuing to ensure that the, the validity of MOTEC reports. And we're now um, getting to a, a, a much more uh, electronic system. So looking at the success of Mobile Midwife then, we've seen a huge, huge demand for this health information. We were surprised actually by the number of non-pregnant women who enrolled into the system. Um, so you see there on the graph that many of the, so the red illustrates the other categories as non-pregnant women who have registered into the system to get this information. And we've seen a huge demand amongst men, um, which was a, a great thing for us to see, and also other members of the household who just want information about maternal and child health. Um, and so in the district that we're working in, we've seen that we've registered 70% of the pregnant population into the system, just to illustrate the level of demand that there is for this information. So we have some feedback from clients um, and also from nurses. So clients in particular are indicating that they can use information from Mobile Midwife to um, empower them to have a voice in the household. So previously, the men in particular, mothers-in-law, um, had a, a lot of decision-making power over a pregnancy in a household. And women now are able to use the messages to justify some of the support that they need during pregnancy. So, for example, access to better food, access to a health facility, um, and perhaps not, not farming so much. Um, 
women have indicated that they feel less alone during their pregnancy because they have a source of guidance and for information. And we've really realised that this, this is not only about health education, but it's also about support and guidance and those sort of softer personal touches that women also want during pregnancy, along with the educational messages. And then looking at the nurses, nurses have indicated that um, they, they like that the data, they are sure about the data quality now, the information that they're collecting, and the time savings that they've experienced by not having to do um, manual tallying for their, for their monthly reports. They've also indicated that they like the educational aspect of mobile midwife because they're sure now that their clients can have better access to information. They were saying that... When, usually when they deliver health education, they get women together in a big group and they don't have time to specifically answer individuals' questions. And with Mobile Midwife, they're now sure that, that individuals are getting a, the chance to get personalised information. So the theme of this particular panel discussion was success. And um, I think I'm, in, I'm encouraged by the, the, the fact that we've implemented something that is successfully running on the ground. We don't yet have the results about the impact that it's having on health outcomes, but it is, it is up and running, and we hopefully will have those results soon. But I wanted to look at some elements of how we've implemented that I think have led to our success. And I think one of those is failure. Um, we've definitely learned a lot about how not to do things. And in fact, we're so good at failing that we've, we've published a report on it, um, which is online. <laughs> and I suggest that you take a look at it if, if you would like to know what not to do. Um, I think some of the other successes of the project is that through our work, we've been, a we've been able to expose other limitations in the health system. So, you know, it's like a tunnel. You expect to see light at the end of the tunnel once you've removed the one blocking point. And, and in fact, you don't see the, the bright light at the end. You just see the next challenge behind it. So, for example, um, through the system, we were, and having real-time access to data, we were able to see that vaccinations were not happening in all facilities on a regular basis. And we looked into that and realized that some facilities didn't actually have vaccine fridges. So having this MoTeC system up and running has actually enabled us to, to look further into the constraints of other aspects of the health system. Um, I think demand is a good sign that we're doing well. So this is now becoming a, an open source platform that we're offering other, in other countries and in other verticals. So responding to Dahlberg's um, comments this morning that there was quite a lot of the silo effect in these implementations. Actually, MoTeC is now being used um, for HIV surveillance and education in um, India and we're hoping to expand into other health verticals as well. Um, so partnerships are working successfully with the government um, health delivery system, and also with telcos, and that's the part partnership area that we're really trying to get deeper into, and that's crucial for the, the success of the project longer term and at scale. I think we've successfully listened to client needs by testing on a daily basis with them in the, in the communities and really co collaborating with them to develop meaningful applications. I think our biggest challenge is this holy grail of scale and sustainability, and that's our next big area to work on. Thank you.